On this episode of The Silburn Show, the Solution-Oriented Summit, creating a platform for effective discourse, seeking solutions and impacting actions, tackling knife and gun crime in our community. Let it not be our legacy. With your host, Silburn Sidiel and Stefan Gislane. With Cherry Johnson on the impact of social media and county lines. Okay, well, Sherry, well, good afternoon, yeah? Afternoon, so well, thanks good, for good, having good. me. I'm so sick, guys, so apologies. I've got a fever. <laughs> Can you imagine? A she's got a fever. Can you imagine when she's looking well then? <laughs> well, listen, uh, the reason why I invited you on is because while speaking, we talked about county lines, and uh, I've seen your different adverts where you're working with the police and with organizations about when ch children are missing but also we tapped into social media as well and we, we, we joined it up. So without further ado, can you just explain the work that you do and especially linking with county lines sure. and uh, social media, Sherry, thanks. Okay, so I'm a family and behavior therapist and I am the founder of Shared Intent Support, which was the first 24 hour support agency that works with girls exiting gang lifestyle, serious violence and sexual exploitation. I felt it was important to open a service that was available after 5 p.m. because I've noticed most statutory and social care sectors close at 5, but young people's lives start after 3.30 when they finish school, am I right? So why would social services be closed if parents need assistance after 3.30? Um, I also noticed that there was no organisation that works 24 hours a day and if our young people need support, most of them, they're on the streets from about between 7 and 2 a.m. in the morning. So if all services are closed, who are going to capture these young people? During my journey of um, founding Shared Intent Support, I've worked across numerous local authorities across the UK. I've done partnership work um, with the EU looking at women using violence and worked with six... Um, countries in the EU to um, develop that plan and then we delivered at the London City Hall. And then moving forward, I thought, okay, I need to expand my business. I need to be able to work with parents because what I found over the years was that working with young people, you can't fix the problem. You have to work with the family. It has to be holistic. And that's where I feel like there's a borderline of almost disconnect. If youth workers and mentors are going in and working with just the young person and not acknowledging the parents and the families, they're almost reinforcing the line of disrespect and not honoring the parents' roles and you know, their responsibility. So during the years um, of working in, in that hemisphere, I kind of picked up that social media is a big influence. And of course, you're all familiar with social media because you're aware of the Silborn Show, which is on Facebook. But beyond the Facebook um, application, we have social media platforms we're just not aware of. And I found that over the three years, that if parents educate themselves in terms of social media applications, you'll definitely be able to safeguard your children. And I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. This is not about learning how to use the application for the benefit of yourself. It's actually learning the application so you can better safeguard your children. So what do I mean? So this is what a young person's phone normally looks like. Right? You've got numerous applications on there. You probably have no idea what the applications mean and how important they are to that young person. That alone is an issue. You do? Which one do you know? This, this one? Viber. Well done. And Pinterest. Do you know how to use them? and download them. Excellent, you're halfway there. So it's your responsibility to be able to identify these applications. So you've got Facebook, which is your common blue one, but the one I'm gonna focus on today is this one, a Snapchat. This is the most important application that you can think of. I wanna show you how um, powerful Snapchat is. Every young person who I work with or every local authority that has commissioned me to do work, I add the young people on my Snapchat because I use it as a tool to encourage them and show them and share my journey. I can only say so much, but young people are very visual. So if I give them the opportunity to follow me on Snapchat, they definitely know I'm speaking the truth. What do I mean? So when I was getting ready to come here this morning, I Snapchat my journey. I shared the advert, um, advert that Silborn had put on Facebook, and then I shared it among all my young people on Snapchat platform. That was to inform them of the event, but also show them my continuous progress, that once you leave a particular lifestyle, you can definitely go on to do much better. So what is Snapchat? 
Snapchat is a social media application that works just like Facebook and Instagram. However, the advantages of Snapchat is messages are only on the timeline for 24 hours. So the young people add who they want to see on their Snapchat. Once they post a story, it's up there for 24 hours, but most importantly, they're able to view who in particular has seen their story. And you're probably thinking, why is that so important? Well, we know that social media influences our young people to a big extent. So they are interested in views, who's looking at their stuff, who are they influenced, and who can see what's going on. So, first of all, what does Snapchat do? Snapchat demonstrates your lifestyle. I demonstrate my lifestyle there. I share everything what's going on, I share information, and I connect with people. In Snapchat, you can have a conversation with up to 32 to 34 people at one time. That means if I create a group and send a message out, th those people in the group can see that message. It is gone once they open it. They can't see it again. And I want you to hold on to what I'm saying because this then comes into the exploitation and the sexual exploitation online. You can view your story and you, of course, as I said, you can count your numbers. It tells you who's recorded your post if somebody's recorded it. Now, in young people's terms, that's so important because they're then able to see who is watching their story exactly and they're also then able to share with their friends who has been watching their story. Now, county line shifts and borderline exploitation. This is a big part of your social media application on Snapchat. Most young people advertise shift work for young people to go out of town. What do I mean by out of town? I mean OT. It means out of London to distribute and sell drugs as part of a network for people who are part of a bigger gang network. Now, majority of parents in here are probably thinking, what am I talking about? And that's the issue within itself. Most of you will see that young people have gone missing on Facebook and you probably share again and you probably add a few words and ask people to share and have you seen this young person, etc. But it goes way beyond that because a lot of the messages you are sharing, a lot of the children are actually not missing. And I want you to understand that a lot of the statistics wrapped up in missing people are a combination of those who are genuinely missing and those who have gone OT, out of town, to sell drugs actively. So remember what I said. If you have particular people on your Snapchat, they will offer shifts for your young person to go and sell drugs during the summer holiday, two or three days, and they'll tell them, look, you're just going OT out of London. You get a pair of trainers, you can make 200 pounds and come back. Now, your young person, depending on how you parent, will tell you they've gone somewhere else or they've just gone missing. You start to stress and you don't know where that young person is, but 90% of the time, their network on social media knows where that young person is. So, county lines of missing person. What do I mean? Most people, I think within ITV, we've seen recently a number of documentaries where they've kind of done short snippets of young people being groomed and, you know, they talk about them being in a capacity of being vulnerable. I need to just blow that out of the water for you now. Not every young person who goes OT to sell drugs is vulnerable and groomed and has gone there against their will. A high percentage of young people go there willingly, knowing what is there to offer knowing that their parents are going to be looking after them but because you as parents have not chosen to educate yourself on how the application works you can only access a limited medium of information in terms of where your young person is and i want you to just sit down and take that in a minute parents who are able to maneuver around social media are those who tend to have better results at finding their young person and able to capture who their young person is actually hanging out with your network and friends at times. Now, the beauty about um, Snapchat is, is if you add your child on Snapchat, it then throws up a list of people that you might share in common with them, which is their friends. Add them. Because I'm sure we all heard the saying, if you show me your company, I'll tell you who, I, who you are. Am I right? So if you know the kind of company your children are moving amongst, you'll then be able to kind of determine what your children are up to. Most young people actually display what they're up to on their social media application. They don't use Facebook because they know parents are on Facebook. They do not use no form of Facebook to send messages, to share movements, because they know majority of the parents on there or family relatives. So it's for you to update yourself in terms of how do you use the social media application. So I'm very, I'm much a solution-focused person.
and I want to throw some solutions out there to you. How many of you have a smartphone in your hand right now? I can see probably two adults over there, the lady, the gentleman, the photographer. How many of you have a smartphone? Just put your hand up for me, please. Don't be shy. Okay, so majority of us have a smartphone. How many of you have Snapchat on your phone? No. How many have heard of Snapchat before I kind of highlighted it today? Right. Can I ask you to do me a favor if you have a teenage child? Can you go into your app store and download Snapchat? I don't want you... Did you shake your head? Why? Why? It's delete from his phone. Okay, cool. But I still want you as a parent to take a bit of responsibility on how it maneuvers because he's not going to stay young forever. And it is going to be a platform that he's going to go on. So the earlier you master it, is the better you can kind of maneuver around him, yeah? So when you get a moment, download the application and take the time to get to know it. It's very straightforward. And before I finish my set, I'll probably take a picture of all you guys. And then what I'll do is I'll put it on my Snapchat and then we'll see how many young people that comes back to me and says, oh, that's my auntie, that's my uncle. And then I'll post them to Silborn and then he can share them with you. Because what you don't understand is Snapchat is very, very powerful. So let's look at some safeguarding solutions. Parents, I need you to understand and accept that change is here. Social media can make young people millionaires if used correctly. But social media can also take away a lot of young people's lives if used incorrectly. So I need you to get a grip of it and understand it is here to stay and there's only going to be further more development. Number two, I want you to educate yourself on what young people are doing. It is your responsibility. It's nobody else's responsibility. It's not the government's responsibility. It is you as those who are in your household. You, I'm hoping that every parent standing here today knows where their child is. And for me, I govern my house quite close. So if my daughter wasn't here with me today, there's no way she would be out because I'm not at home. And if any emergency was to happen to her while I'm out, they go straight to my registered address. I'm not there. So she would have to remain home. And that's just to limit and that's to safeguard her. Speak with other parents and community professionals. A lot of people do not reach out to the professionals here. I speak across the country. And what I find is that our community is closed to seeking advice. Advice is free. And at times when you need it, the best place you can get it from are from those in the community and the specialists and the expert who are working in and among the community. It's your responsibility to ask if you don't know. And also, download and get to know the application. If you notice you are, you're on the application and you don't see nothing from your child, they have blocked you. So have that conversation with them. Say to them, Mary, James, I'm not seeing anything on your post snap. Have you blocked me? And what you find is, A, that conversation is able to enable communication between you and your young person. And also, it gives you a somewhat power into something that is new and very foreign to parents. So what I want you to do is take away from today is that you have responsibilities as safeguarding your children to A, educate yourself on the application, B, get to know, and C, if you don't know, then ask for support. Thank you, Cyril. Don't go anywhere. Now, the, 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 the police also is trying to address this particular issue here. And uh, is, is that working with all county lines? Because it seems like there are lots of research and lots of work out there, but is it happening? So I tell you what, um, being honest, is the police um, commission people like myself and other experts to assist them with the area that they have no knowledge. And what's really interesting is the police will tell us they don't have the solution. And that's why they're looking for all types of alternatives and various interventions. So what can I say? Um, I don't expect the police to do the whole job. So I don't have high expectations on them, but they're very open to looking at uh, multi-agency working and trying to address the strategy from there. So what is the key three points? I mean, that have come up through your sort of work and um, out of community person's work. Since the police are saying, hey, we need help here. What is the work that you guys are doing? Right, so the first key point is we need to work in unison. And we cannot be working in silos and we expect to have the job done. Number two, we need to throw our pride, pride away as parents. And sometimes we need to throw over our cultural barriers. So I do a lot of work in terms of the police in, in perspective. 
So one thing I trained uh, Northamptonshire police on was understanding cultural perspective in terms of if you have um, an estate where you have predominant, let's say, Jamaican families, because I'm, uh, you know, I'm from Jamaican heritage, so I can only speak on my own. Um, we were socialised, you know, from young. My mum, Saturday, she you know, tells us to go and play out from like 11 o'clock in the morning. That's because she's tidying up the house, spinning around the furniture, wiping down the skirting board. She doesn't want us in. Um, so we would go out and play. And if you think about it, if you have 40 Jamaican families on one estate, you're going to have 40 odd children possibly outside playing. Now, what I'm trying to teach the um, police is this. In Jamaica, we do not culturally uh, go into each other's houses. I can come and check you and sit on your veranda. We can see Mary, we tell Mary to come and sit down on the veranda and we're reasoning for hours and you haven't been in my house. What I want them to understand is they are dealing with parents who are first generation and their children are second generation. So that cultural perspective hasn't been lost as yet. It's not watered down. So a lot of these children you see out on the outside um, who you assume are in gang activities are actually just congregating because their parents have the same cultural values. Right. Um, another one I'm going to throw back at the parents is you have to get to know the application. I'm, what I see in my communities, I will go around and speak to parents and some of them will roll their eyes. You know, Snapchat, I don't need to learn how to use Instagram. That's the issue there. You can't display ignorance if you want your children not to show ignorance. Uh, any questions from anyone in the audience? On the, anybody have any questions to ask to Sherry? Yeah, please. Uh, once again, my name is Darren Gregg. I'm a mentor. Hi, Darren. I'm not going to cuss the government. <laughs> I was going to earlier, but I'm not going to do it now. But yeah, County Lines. Um, what do you feel is being done by the government and the police, as well as organisations like yourselves, to prevent this or at least do something to stem it a little bit? Okay, so the government kind of does a national strategic approach where it kind of brings community workers, specialists, big organisations, etc. to work across like a national plan. And then how that filters down to us individually is we, we might work to particular outcomes, yeah, to keep the neighbourhood safe, to reduce serious violence. You know, uh, my specialism is to reduce sexual exploitation and exploitation of, of young people. Um, in terms of how that's delivered, everybody kind of varies. Now, what I'm going to say to you is this, there's only so much we can do as well as organisations and government. We really need the parents to get on to it. What do I mean? We have parents here who, your children go missing for three days. Two weeks later, they buy you a 43-inch plasma TV. Your son has no job. You've seen no letter come from Universal Credit. You and I both know he's not working, but you accepted the TV. So A, the parents have compromised their principles there and then. Respect is lost. Your son then has the TV and he then starts to buy particular items in the house. Mum is losing parental control and responsibility because all the monetary things are coming in. She seems to forget her role. Does that make sense? So we need parents to be able to say no and not be afraid of saying no. When I hear parents kind of say, um, yeah, but I'm afraid my son attacks me. Okay, <laughs> listen to me and listen to me good. Bend the tree from when it's young. And if not, you can't be afraid of the government to discipline your child. Does that make sense? Um, you need to be strong. And I always say to people, if you're struggling, send them back home. It's as simple as that. Send them back home, deal with them how you need to back there and bring them up when you come to. So it's a short but big answer. I can't answer it all in one, but we've all got our bit to play as a collective. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, get involved with Sna Snapchat. Yes. Get involved with Snapchat and uh, social media, Instagram, Pinterest, what, Viber? Yeah, so the YouTube. ones I want you to be concerned about are yeah. Snapchat and Instagram. So this lifestyle that you see young people, how you see living their lifestyle, it's all played out on social media. In terms of myself, how I'm so successful with what I do, I use the same tool that's destroying the young people to uplift them and show them positive things. I have to uh, buy into particular things because a young person is not going to see a mentor of a particular age and hear her speaking and think, I need to change my life. Because most of these young people are earning a particular type of money that almost if they see their mentor dri driving a Vauxhall Corsa and their friends are driving A-class Mercedes, there's no respect. So there's some things that you have to understand, you know, like I, I buy into the technology thing. So all my young people think I'm cool because I've got an iWatch, you know, I like cars. It's I keep up watch. to date. Yeah, yeah I'm oh up to the days, time. Man. You know, I keep up to watch. the time with stuff. Um, <laughs> so I can attract them and draw them in. But I show them everything that I acquire is through honest money. So you can still look like you're living that life, but you have an honest way of, of earning that money. Fantastic. Well, listen, Cherry Johnson, thank you so much for that. Thank and you. And of course, you said persons can reach you. 
Yes, yeah, so uh, my website is www.sherryjohnson.co.uk. -E There's like some posters I've left yeah. out there, but yeah. Silborn, before we go, sure. my Snapchat knew I was coming here, so I just wouldn't be able to finish without... You're going to Snapchat us? Of course! Okay. Hey! And this is all to the youths. And this is all to the youths. So uh, we're just letting the youths know that we're here at the Silborn Show, which I've okay. shared on my way. Okay. And what I'm going to do is post it to you. Awesome. And then you can put Am it I on, on Snapchat. Facebook. Yeah, cool. Well, you better be. Oh, sugar. I think I'm on Snapchat, but I never use you it. You better actually. use it. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You for, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen, a round of applause to uh, Cherry Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.